Hello and welcome to another G-Spot Pork and the Arousing episode of Techspert Weekly. This week coming at you from sunny California. And by the way, Dr. Dre, if indeed that's your real name, are you even a doctor? I doubt it. California most definitely does not know how to party, seeing as how most of the bars around here are shut by bloody 10pm. All I can say is thank f for Irish pubs which are very much like New York rats in that they're active all night long and you're never more than about seven feet from one. Techspert Weekly! But anyway, the whole reason I'm out here is for MediaTek's Executive Summit, where several super smart boffins got up on stage and said lots of very clever things about techie shenanigans. Some of which I almost understood if I scrunched my brow and concentrated really hard. All while I shot thrilling footage just like this. Apologies for the hand tremors, that was partly down to the aforementioned Irish pubs and partly thanks to that aggressive American AC. I mean, outside right now, it's like a perfect 20-ish degrees. As inside that dimly lit room, it felt more like two. Seriously, I haven't seen that many rock-hard man nipples in one place since all of the Magic Mike films. And to all my US chums watching, if you really like cold, dark places so much, just move to the f***ing UK. You'll love it. Now, mostly what we've all been drooling over here at the summit was MediaTek's fresh new Dimensity 9300, which I already banged on about last week while smashed out of my tiny wee mind on single malt. Gamers in particular should be thrilled by the beefy performance with ARM's immortalist G720 GPU, offering strong support for the most demanding Android fare. In the demo session, I got a piddle about with Arena Breakout, running with a proper posh bit of ray trace and light shenanigans at a seemingly flawless 60 frames per second. And hey, this is my kind of multiplayer game, the kind where it's offline so there's not actually any other players, so you don't get shot in the nutsack every three and a half seconds by some wee twat on his school lunch break. And any Genshin fans should be dripping from all kinds of different bodily areas at the thought of significantly shorter loading times, as well as judder-free gameplay at the highest graphic settings with 20% less power consumption. Whoa. I mean, obviously, I still won't know what the f*** I'm supposed to be doing. I'll just be wandering about the place screaming at everything like an escaped dementia patient. But f*** my socks, it will all look absolutely gorgeous. And MediaTek was also showing off the first Dimensity 9300 smartphone at the summit, namely the Vivo X100 Pro, an unsurprisingly massive flagship boasting a ruddy huge 5400 mAh capacity battery with 100 watt fast charging, you got all the usual dick wagglingly premium specs, and a triple 50 meg camera including some Zeiss branded super telephoto shenanigans. And although this hasn't actually launched globally, I am hoping to bring you a full review soon. Fingers crossed, touch wood. Not that wood, well, maybe that wood. And also, at the end of day one, MediaTek randomly brought Tony Hawk on stage. Tony Hawk! The Tony Hawk! Tony Cockin' Hawk! I've got no idea why, but hey, who needs a reason for Tony Hawk? It's Tony mother flickin' Hawk. Tony Hawk. Anyway, now it's time to pass back to me from a couple of days ago before I got to LA in a thrilling time cop style scenario where I've already smashed through all of last week's viewer comments so I can basically just get my horse straight back down that Irish bar and pay $15 for a beer that isn't cause f***ing light. Well, you know what, f*** it, since it's sunny out, I might actually just crack out the duty free and go drape my horrifically pale torso across a sunbed down by the swimming pool. Scare the living sh out of some American kids who probably think I'm some sort of day vampire. See you all next week, assuming that is that this afternoon doesn't end with some hapless hotel janitor poking my bloated booze fueled corpse out of the shallow end with some massive pull. Viewer comments. <coughs> Alright, thanks future me, who hopefully by now is sat by the pool having his 10th slippery nipple of the afternoon. And let's kick off this week's viewer comments with Kuroshinko, who says, To be honest, you're the only tech YouTuber that consistently uses an anime wallpaper on your phones, and I really like that. And yeah, that does kind of surprise me, because let's face it, we are all just a massive bunch of tech nerds. So I thought quite a few of my fellow YouTube twats would be all over it, but uh, I know a couple of the US guys are into the anime and manga like TK Bay, um, but I guess they're probably just not as blatant as I am. Etienne Sharp says, Isn't words coming out of your mouth that are horrifically out of date, not just the default state for Textbook Weekly? Mostly around horrifically awful booze, 70s movies, and old kids' TV shows. I haven't actually banged on about kids' telly on this show for quite some time, which is a bit of a shame, but I did find myself recently in a conversation all about goosebumps. 
And the original show wasn't quite my generation, I was a bit too old for that, but I used to watch it quite a lot with my younger sister, usually when I was half cut. I mean, that show was just like perfect post-pub fodder from the, you know, hilariously bad acting to the budget, which must have been about a fiver an episode. I mean, some of those costumes and stuff, Jesus Christ, Goosebumps really did put the special in special effects. But what we were having this conversation about was the Goosebumps reboot, which they've uh, they've just shoved on Disney Plus, I think it is. The one with Justin Long, which is actually it's pretty decent. Like, I wasn't expecting much. My expectation levels were about shin high. We've got to say, like, you know, pretty much everyone on camera could kind of act to some degree. And the CGI didn't look like some 15-year-old did it in Microsoft Paint. Anyway, that could be a topic of discussion for next week. What's your favourite reboot of any classic TV show you used to watch as a kid? Uh, next up, Eternial says, Blood is drunk as f*** today. I cannot lie, you certainly have a point. And Just Jim simply says, Good grief. Very well put, sir. I think that's a perfect two-word synopsis of last week's episode. The JZA says, Of all the devices you have on hand, you choose to use the iPhone 15 Pro Max, A eh? Actions speak. You wouldn't believe how much s*** I've had off people for using this thing for the past week and a half. Oh, you're on the iPhone 15 Pro Max again, are you? Oh, you decided you really like it then. I'm a phone reviewer. God damn it, I spent £1,200 on this bastard and now I actually need to do a proper video on it. And you know what? Fair play to Apple. They have actually fixed some of the issues that this thing had for the first two months of its existence. Although they apparently still haven't fixed the weird Roman problem that it had. So I went to Belgium last weekend and didn't get a mobile signal the entire freaking time. Over a grand this was, and I couldn't even use this phone as a phone. Luckily, it didn't really bloody matter in the end, because most of the time was spent deep underground in various dive bars, consuming so much alcohol that I couldn't even pull my iPhone out of my pocket if I tried really hard, let alone focusing on the screen and getting it to do stuff. DangerZone007 says, Uncle Spurt, you always bang on about all computer games. Yeah, I probably do quite a bit, to be fair. Did you ever play Leisure Suit Larry? Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I was and I still am a massive adventure game geek. Started off with the Infocom text adventures back in the day, Zork and all those classics. Used to spend hours mapping out these complex labyrinths in bloody massive notebooks. God, I had so many girlfriends. And then I progressed from there onto the likes of Maniac Mansion or the LucasArts adventure games and everything. But I never really got into the Sierra stuff like Leisure Suit Larry and King's Quest and all those. I played one of them, I can't remember which one. I played it for like a day and I just got so sick of endlessly dying. <laughs> and fair enough, you know, if you're playing one of these adventure games, you walk into a room, there's a tiger there and your next action is to poke it in the nuts with a pointy stick. You shouldn't be too upset when it rips your cock off. But literally, in these bloody Sierra adventures, you would pick up a book and examine it and it would explode in your f***ing face. But the genre that I absolutely have the most love for is definitely the old shonky FMV adventure games. You know, the likes of Phantasmagoria, Gabriel Knight 2, all those absolute bangers. And again, I think a lot of it was down to the crap production values, the fact that no one could act to save their lives. And also, you've got to love the quality of that video as well. So compressed that everyone's face consisted of about four pixels. Be a massive geeky love for all of that shiz. Can't get enough of it. And uh, next up, Fate Has Writer's Block says, Is Uncle Spurt going to get his hands on a Steam Deck OLED anytime soon? Well, only if I f***ing buy one. I've heard Diddly Dick from the Steam PRs, whoever the Steam PRs even are, as they've never actually been in touch. So yeah, that will have to be a self-made purchase, I'm afraid. What I particularly enjoyed was the timing of it all, because they literally announced the Steam Deck OLED the day after I finished shooting and editing my best game in handheld consoles video. Cheers, lads. That's mightily f***ing appreciate it. So yeah, that video only just went live earlier this week, already massively out of date. Oh, hello random cat. It's gone through for some food, are you? I'll just wait for you to use the other cat flap. Now, of course, we started discussing MediaTek's Dimensity 9300 last week when it was actually launched, so we've got a few comments all about that bad boy, starting with Dr. Poo Poo Head. It says, given the reputation of Dimensity chipsets having heating issues, I wouldn't be surprised if the Dimensity 9300 actually gets hotter than Uncle Spurt's pants in a literal sense. Now, I've got to say, personally, I've never had any issues with any of the recent MediaTek chipsets. And certainly all the phones I reviewed with the likes of the 9200 in, I didn't find they got tossed at all unless you were gaming for literally hours at a time. And I can't really do that anymore because of my knackered old joints. 
Of course, we'll see how the Dimensity 9300 fares when we actually get some fawns with it packed in there. Um, I've got absolutely no idea to where, where to begin with the, the pronunciation here. Uh, Kofta's Pies Smitaru? I'm just going to f***ing give up. Uh, this guy here says, I think we should make a benchmark that can calculate how much 8k tentacle hentai it can render. I'll speak to the MediaTek guys about that out in LA, see if we can get something on the go. Although I'm slightly worried about the possibility of me going blind. Oh, and we've also had some comments on the subject of the classic old rear-mounted fingerprint sensor, RIP. Pixel Gaming says, I much prefer the fingerprint sensor in the power button as there's no fumbling about for it. I mean, yeah, I'd say that's fairly fair. I mean, the, the rear-mounted fingerprint sensors were variable, to say the least. Some of them were just perfect, like the positioning was excellent. Every time you plucked your phone out of your pocket, your finger just naturally fell on that sensor. Whereas others, you'd be fingering the back end for ages trying to find it. A problem I feel we've all had at some point or other. Beyond the ones that come immediately to mind, the worst offenders are the Sony Xperia. Was it the XZ2 and the XZ3? Which had really nice curved backs, look gorgeous and everything. But that fingerprint sensor was like halfway down, so you'd have to sort of clench your hand into like a twisted claw to, to actually get the scanner to work. Uh, Sala Lucas says, Nexus 5 with Lineage OS is still my backup phone. Had to replace the USB port and the motherboard as it lost Wi-Fi a few years back but it's working still. Also on the subject of the Nexi, uh, High Voltage Gaming says, all Nexuses are legends. Picked up one for $30 last week. And Fathom627 says, I still have my Nexus 4. Bought it new with the upgraded storage of 16 gigabyte. I still love it, but it's beyond usable now, unfortunately. But what really gets me is I just recently realized that the Nexus 5 just celebrated its 10 year birthday. It was a freaking decade ago that I reviewed that for, was it Mobile Choice or a combo? I think I was still at Mobile Choice just. Uh, Davi55x says, Mr. Spurt, what type of watch are you wearing in most videos? Um, when I'm not reviewing a smartwatch, I rock the Withens Scan Watch. Absolutely love this thing because you've got all the notifications, bollocks and all of that stuff. But also it lasts like a month in between charges. And if you like a bit of smartwatches, I did just update my best smartwatches video, which should be going live. If it's not already, then certainly early next week which probably means they'll launch like 12 new smartwatches over the weekend, so that'll be bang out of date as well. Matt Sanchez says, when I form my next funk band, it's definitely going to be called Supernatural Sex Fountain. Not if I form a funk band first, you won't. Although, to be fair, I think to form a band, you probably need some sort of musical talent and also friends, I guess. So that's that bang right out. Uh, Will Rivera says, I think people now ask you about your wallpapers just to mess with you. Yeah, or they just really like the jingle that much. In which case, might as well. Wall.alphacoders.com Wall.alphacoders.com That's where my wallpapers come from. Wall.alphacoders.com And on the subject of, I'm guessing, my werewolf romance novel from last week, Cedric Courage says, I need that book. Please, Uncle Spurt, let us, your loyal followers, know as soon as it will be on sale. I mean, it's literally 350 words long. You've read the entire work in progress last week. I absolutely love, adore to get back to the novel writing at some point, but between the non-stop bukkake tidal wave of tech that just keeps coming at my face and will not stop, and also the fact that I quite like a drink every now and then, there's not really any time for anything else. I honestly spend more time staring into this lens than I do with my daughter these days. I think she's just given up and just started treating the cat as a surrogate dad. Hey, maybe I can make it a New Year's resolution though. I'll stop reviewing stupid Apple phones and I'll spend that time writing proper stuff instead. With the added bonus of that, I'll massively cut my stress levels too. Anyway, a massive thank you to everyone who commented last week. Please do leave your comments, questions, theories on life down in the section, the comment section, you know the one. And we'll smash our way through as many of those as possible next week. Yeah, it's beginning next week. This is about next week. That's right, you lucky buggers. Next week, it's coming right at your face. And by that, I mean my iPhone 15 Pro Max review. Two months in the making, baby. Simply cannot put it off any longer so yeah got that uh, coming your way the best smartwatches update if i haven't already put that live right now and of course another one of these bloody episodes where we'll take another jolly jaunt through viewer comments and maybe take a look at some sexy upcoming tech you won't want to miss it let me tell you tell you that so please do put subscribe ding that notifications bell and have yourselves an absolutely fantastic weekend love you guys